the November edition of Wolf Jacks. This evening, we have the exclusive interview with South Kitsap's new superintendent, Dr. Beverly Cheney. The parking situation at high school has become a major concern of students. We've also got the scoop on the recent homecoming assembly. These stories and more on tonight's episode of Wolf Tracks. Steve-O, Skyler, we got everything set up? We got all the cameras set up, all the wire laid out. I say ready for tonight's football game. Well, let's go back to class. Mr. Downing is just to do the hosting for the show. Who's got the keys? Not me. Ah, oh, dang it. What are we going to do? The hosting on the roof? Well, here's our first story on the ASP president, Josh Meeker. Why don't you take a look at this while we figure out what to do? <sighs> Every school has a student body president, and this year, South has a multi-talented one. Talented one. I wanted to make sure that my seniors were here. Seniors, let me hear you! Josh has many responsibilities when it comes down to what needs to be done. But when he has the opportunity to be goofy, he'll take every chance. Um, as ASB president, um, there's a lot of responsibility. Um, not just assemblies where I did it like I want to be. Like the class and things, I need to be serious and I, I try. He views this year as an opportunity to graduate, get good grades, enjoy the end of the senior year with his friends, and continue to work hard in sports. Senior year, having a lot of fun, you know, hanging out with friends, enjoying sports like I like I have for many years. Um, just kind of the finale, you know, right before the, the last dance, right before you go to real life. You know? One of the biggest and greatest feeling for Josh is when he scores a touchdown. Mr. Bowden always says, My main man, Josh Baker! Scoring a touchdown is the greatest feeling I've ever had. And the feeling of, of just the ball coming down into my hands and then landing in the end zone. Uh, it's like I, was in, like I was floating in the air. It was, it was amazing. Well, Ryan Cole's got a slight edge on me now. Um, I, think, I think at this pace I won't catch him, but I think if I pick it up, I might have a chance. Um, and since I've done it three times now, the feeling doesn't get any worse. It doesn't get any worse. It gets better each time. Everyone knows Josh can be a serious guy when it comes down to business, but anybody you ask and say he's a character as well. Man, this is so embarrassing. Only new students get stuck on the roof. Tell me about it. Whose fault is this? Speaking of new, check out the star in SK's new superintendent. Skylar! Here at South Kitsap High School, we take great pride in our staff and students. With over 2,600 young adults attending South Kitsap, it can be a lot to handle. But imagine being in charge of the whole district and being new at that. I'd like you to meet Beverly Cheney, the ambitious successor of Bill Lamont. The former superintendent set a standard of being very active in the community as well as being knowledgeable of current issues. I asked Beverly whether or not she felt any pressure in having such big shoes to fill. Oh, it's, it's been wonderful for me, and, and um, as I've said to a number of folks, I really do believe I'm probably one of the luckiest new superintendents in the state of Washington. And, and a lot of credit needs to be given to my predecessor, which is uh, Bill Lamont, because of the fact of, of, of leaving this district with the community support we have and with, with the strong staff. I also asked Bev, and yes, you can call her Bev for short, what she thought about us getting a new school. New high school? Yeah. And I'll give you a, a real clear answer, I don't know. And the reason I don't know, to, to be serious, is the fact that, um, number one, that's not a decision that I would make, nor would I want to make on my own. It's one I think that the, uh, needs to have a lot of discussion. And to be honest with you, when we're looking at a, a, a facility, whether it be high school or any facility, one of the things we have to look at is the instructional programs. And that's going to be hopefully part of an overall uh, process, strategic planning process. Because whether we, we do another high school or, or whatever facility we're looking at, we need to make sure that it's one that will take us well into the future. So, so again, to answer your question, I don't have an answer at this point in time, but hopefully we will, and I definitely know it's of interest to a lot of people. There's been a gradual rise in the Wassel scores in the last few years, and if you don't know what the Wassel is, it's the Washington Assessment of Student Learning, the test that shows the schools how they're doing. I asked Janie what she is going to do to make sure the trend continues. 
And we as educators also then need to, to make sure that we have the skills and knowledge to meet the, the diverse needs of our students. So, so that's where the priority is going to be is, is on that, which means then we need to look at everything that we do in the scope of how do we best use our resources. Well, it seems we've covered the two main issues here, having a new school, maybe for my kids, but making sure Wassel scores stay up. And you might be saying to yourself, where is she from? You might be surprised, pleasantly surprised. Grew up in Seattle, went to Seattle Public Schools, the University of Washington, so I am a Husky, so I apologize to those of you who are Cougars out here, and received my doctorate from Seattle University, so I really am a Northwest person. And well, I just had to ask, one final question, one final thought, one final, oh, never mind. How does she like us as students? Oh, I think the kids are fantastic, and, and, and a lot of that is, in my uh, going around to schools, I found the kids to be um, just really polite and respectful, uh, willing to share and help whenever necessary, and that goes from elementary all the way through high school. Well, now you know the new superintendent. If you would like to get in further contact with her, just call the number right here on the bottom of the screen. You know, I like this profiling thing. Maybe I might even do the video production instructor. Oh, never mind. I wouldn't want to put you to sleep. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Downham. I'm just joking. I'll see you guys in a bit. Man, I'm so hungry. Tell me about it. If I don't get something to eat, I'm going to flip out. <sighs> hey, you're holding out on us. What is up with that? Where'd you get that? I, I, I found it up here. Oh, food. Student store, food. Anyway, speaking of student store, Check out this story about the Decker program that South Kids Out High School runs. Is that still good? Got some of that? The SK Student Store is run by Advanced Marking Class and Beginning Marking Class. Ms. Lamar has been the instructor of both classes and store for eight years now. The Store Search is a learning lab for all the marketing students to learn, to learn how to run and operate a business. And then in addition, all of the funds go to the DECA ASB account, which helps all of our conferences, activities, and all the different things that DECA members participate in. The SK Student Store is going to be the first student store in Washington State to sell items online. Beginning of November, we will have an online spirit store, which will sell sweatshirts, t-shirts, blankets, beanies, uh, just a variety of different items to promote school spirit, and we'll also have things tailored to the staff, alumni, and to the current students of South Kitsap. It's not as hard as you might think with all the work they do in the store. Um, I really like the class. I think it's a great, great experience for me. Uh, yeah, I find it pretty fun. Uh, you get a lot of time to work. Uh, it's not too stressful, and uh, you know, you get a lot from it. Um, really fun to get to learn about how business works. The advanced class works in the store during their class period, second or fifth. The beginning class works in the store during their lunch period. And remember, if you can't make it to the store, you can go online at www.skwolfwork.org. That is a dead seagull. What'd you two find? <laughs> Whoa, that is a dead seagull. That's a lot of blood. You gave blood, right, Steve? That's gross. Check out the scoop on the SK blood drive. That's gross. When you imagine a library, you think of books, computers, and shelves, not blood and needles. But on October 18th and 19th, there is a blood drive, the first of the year, in the library. Many SK students wanted to pitch in and do their part in donating. A lot of blood was donated today, but where does it all go? from all the hospitals between Vancouver, Washington and Whidbey Island. So 
anything on this side of the mountains, Cascade Range, north and south. How much is expected? Today we're going to do 200 units. Right now, because of September 11th tragedy, we have been having an overage of blood for the first time in history of the blood center. And that's because so many people have come out to help out with the big disasters that have been going on. So right now we have a lot of blood, but now that that blood is starting to expire, it only has 42 days of shelf life. With 42 days of shelf life, all the blood that came in on the first week after the Twin Towers accident, that will expire in shortly, about the 23rd of October. So by then, we have to replenish our normal blood supply. This drive was also a memory of an SK student, Angela Chapneys, that was in a fatal accident on September 22nd and died two days later. Um, giving blood is important because of the whole uh, September 11th thing, all the stuff that went down, and there's like a need for blood right now, and I think it's just a good community service that the students here at South are doing. And um, this blood drive is dedicated to Angela, and we have like little things for people to sign because they're going to give it to her parents when um, everybody signs it, and it's just a good thing to do. This was the largest first try blood drive ever at SK. Over 300 students donated. SKHS once again showed that they too have a heart. Hey, we're going to take a break. Why don't you check out these important messages? What are you talking about, Travis? There's nothing to film. You tried the band room or uh, the parking lot? I gotta go. talking about, Travis? There's still nothing to film. Have you tried the recent assembly or the student store? I gotta go. It's an F. I don't think this is right at all. You definitely have to look this over. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> Hi, I was wondering if you could look this over to make sure this is the actual grade. I think I could have done better. Sure, I can take a look at that. Hey, Steve, Skylar, come over here. 
Cigar, dude, isn't that your car being towed, brother? That's my car, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I remember doing a store on the SK parking lots. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> what is that this car, dude? Oh. Driving is a part of life that every teenager looks forward to, but being able to drive to school is even better. Parking at South Ketchup High School is mainly a senior privilege, although some juniors get lucky enough to get a parking pass. The views on the current parking situation at South Kitsap High School mainly for the most part vary from grade to grade, but there are always some exceptions. Parking situation at South Kitsap High School is unfair to juniors. I believe that juniors should get a fair chance at parking as well as seniors. I believe we should go by grade point average, not seniors. Um, I think they're fine. I mean, I really don't have a problem with them. Actually, I do have a problem. It's the fact that uh, big people like myself, you know, on the football team, don't have reserve spots closer to the school. I mean, it's hard enough, you know, we come from football practice the next morning, we're sore, we're tired, and we gotta walk a mile because all the early kids get a parking spot closer to the school. They need to reserve parking spots for the bigger people. With there being more students than parking spaces available, some students have had to result to parking in alternative locations. Um, the parking on the side streets primarily is two-hour parking and the generally the businesses uh, at the mall uh, whether you're talking about the South Kitsap Mall or the, um, the High Point Mall or the one down at Bay Street uh, tend to not want us to be parking in there. Even though there's a limited number of parking spaces surprisingly parking violations are down. We had had a 23 parking violations where the person did not belong on campus, had a vehicle that didn't have a permit and they didn't have a permit. Um, there have been cases where they brought alternate vehicles and haven't followed the procedure, but they, they actually did belong here. We, and as I say, we've had 23 of those. As compared to the same time period last year, there were 81. In addition, this year we have not had an occasion to tow anyone, and last year we probably at this point towed approximately 50, 15 vehicles. Even though there are many students who have after school jobs and activities to attend to, parking still remains a senior privilege. What's that noise? Sounds like someone's throwing a party. That's this month's assembly that they're holding in the gym. Sounds like a good time. We get a story on the recent homecoming assembly. Why don't you take a look? <sighs> October 22nd through 26th was homecoming week here at SK. And you know what that means. Yes, it's the homecoming pep assembly. It all kicked off with the national anthem sung by Nikki Washington. <laughs> Followed by the lovely pig kissing contest. And of course, the dance team. But what makes the homecoming assembly so exciting is the skits put on by the SK's homecoming court. <laughs> Come over here, man. 
We're gonna get off the roof. What are you talking about? What you find no keys? No, school closes at 155. That means somebody's gonna see us. Phil, you got some good moves. Are you, are you on dance team? That reminds me. Check out the store on the dance team while we try to calm Phil down. The dance team, each year they come out bigger and better, but this year they came out smiling and styling with new moves and new talent. So far, the team's doing well since they showed they can still move SK to the beat. But what does team captain Laura Lang and co-captain Sharon Norman have to say about this year's season? Um, I think our dance team this, well, this year is doing pretty well. Um, we have a different um, ability of level on our team this year. So we've been working hard to um, catch girls up to um, a higher level, but um, overall we're doing pretty well. I think our team's doing pretty good for it being the beginning of the season, but we have a lot of different levels on the team this year, so we need to work with catching everyone up to the slow, same level slow, slow. and uh, working on all the skills and stuff. And we have some routines ready, so it's doing good. The captains are working diligently to get each dancer up to the same level of skill. They're also going to have to work on new moves and new routines if they're going to make it to state. Um, right now we're working on a kick routine that we'll, per we'll be performing um, at our first um, invitational so competition, which is in November. And then we have our homecoming assembly coming up in a couple weeks. Whoa, watching these girls buzz the groove makes me want to dance. But being on a dance team isn't all fun and games. It's really a lot of hard work. But do these girls really get enough recognition compared to other sports within the school? Many of these girls um, have 10 years of experience in ballet and jazz. And so what may seem like a simple move to one watching is actually very complicated and takes a lot of talent and skill. And I don't think they're recognized for that, the dedication and hard work. Well, all that in mind, these girls are getting plenty of recognition within the school and the community through this story on Wolf Track. So girls, keep smiling and styling and keep moving to the beat. Good luck. To throw Steve off the roof for losing the keys or to not throw Steve off the roof for losing the keys. That is the question. What is the answer? Phil, are you trying out for this false play? There's a false play? Yeah, the drama department does one every year. Let's check out this fall production. Definitely do not throw Steve off the roof, Sir Phil. Every year, the staff and students of SK produce a play for the fall. But this fall's production is rather unique. As opposed to a musical with a huge cast, the decision was made to do two radio dramas based on classic science fiction movies, Journey to the Center of the Earth and The First Men on the Moon. With a minimal cast and a lack of sets or costumes, and all the sound being made from everyday items, it makes for an interesting experience. Let's check it out. The unique part about the both shows is that they are indeed radio play adaptations, and that the audience will it's just, it will be will be taking the audience back to the golden age of radio, and for them it will be just like being in a radio soundstage studio watching a radio play being done for on-air broadcast. The play's backstage crew played a crucial role in the production. Without them, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, complete with a live, on-stage, fully sound crew who are creating all of the sound effects that are part of the script, part of the story, and the other actors and members of the company doing all of the various character voices in each script. And a very different experience for the audience. And with a director like Mr. Olson, you know it will be good. Um, I think for me, directing, it's I enjoy every part of it, even those moments that are really stressful, I enjoy because that's just part of the process, that's part of the creative process. It's meeting deadlines and resolving problems, taking care of those unexpected things that happen at the last minute. Um, I've enjoyed all of it because, from, just because it's been a different kind of production. This concludes our journey to the center of the plays. It seems to be coming together pretty nicely. You can check these plays out at the South Kitsap High School Theater November 9th through the 17th. But if you miss those,
don't fret. Stay tuned for future great performances at SK. Man, we're never going to get off this roof, and it's all Steve's fault. He's the one who lost the keys. Tell me about it. Mr. Downham is never going to find us. What are you guys doing up here? I've been looking for you for hours. Get in here. Tell me what's going on. Hey, Steve. Oh, wait a minute. Steve's the one who lost the keys. He can stand and stay up here a few more hours. Well, that's it for Wolf Tracks. I'm Skyler. And I'm Phil. Steve's the guy going to be walking around up here. We'll see you next time. Have a good night.